furious driving, proud to be supported by Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. And Lancaster Insurance cover the furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and today we're going to be looking at our little Spirito di Ponto, a car with a three barrel name. In fact, I think when we had them back in the 90s, it was fairly new cars, we actually used to call them the Spirito because it's, that's his Christian name and Punto is just his surname. Anyway, this is my 75 ELX from 1994, which is believed to be the oldest Punto in the UK and there's a few jobs which need to be got on with on this car. Let's head around to the boot and see what the shopping has been. Now you've already seen um, that I purchased an oil filter and a uh, timing belt. After I spoke to Jamie over at Go Italia doing the inspection of this car, I also bought a rocker cover, gasket, and I've got a water pump because it turns out I thought the water pump was actually quite a hard thing to bleed. He says no, it's actually an absolute doddle, so we're going to replace the water pump as well oil obviously too. Um, that's probably what I'm not going to do today. What I am going to do today though, because there's other box of stuff turned up in the post, I have bought an awful lot of built hamber underbody stuff. This is S50 which is a cavity wax. I've got um, UC which is the, oh no, where's it gone? Somewhere near is Dynax UC which is clear underbody sealant like I used on the red uh, 2001 Mini, because that way you can see what's underneath the, the, the wax, so you don't lose the original finish, which is gonna be going underneath that car very shortly indeed, because that looks amazingly pristine underneath, so we're gonna keep that looking that way. But for this car, we have got several cans, and that one again, ninth time lucky. But for this car, we have got UB, which is the black stuff, because the bottom of this car is not desperately pretty. Um, it's solid, but there's lots of surface rust, and this stuff, you just grind it back to a surface that's not falling off, and paint on the black stuff and then the car is rust proofed for the future and that is my plan for today get this thing into a position where it's safe to use regardless of the weather there is one fly in the ointment and that is this area down here which has been previously repaired and um, so what i'm going to do is not dynax up to this corner so i can go in and uh, and re-repair this at some point in the future but i don't know if you've noticed but i've got quite a lot of welding to do and really don't want any more right now. Right, let's get this thing up in the air. Now, a funny thing happened on the way to the club. Uh, my big blue Draper Jack developed a fault, so I had to go back. Um, that's gonna be repaired under warranty, and then they just swapped it out, um, which is fantastic. So nice new three-ton Draper trolley jack, just there, low access, which is brilliant, so it gets under the low cars, really high lift lots of power however i needed a jack while that one was away for a week or so and so i drive past a machine mart a couple of times a week so i went in and i grabbed a three ton clark strong arm which is very very similar indeed also very low access also very high lift also three tons this does mean that between the two of them i can lift six tons and that means i can buy a truck or a tractor Mm, probably not what that means. But anyway, no, <laughs> the point of this is I need access to the entire chassis, so I'm gonna put this onto the the rampy things, but this is like the Rover 400. It won't drive up the rampy things because they just slide out of the way because they're crap. So I'm gonna jack it up, put it on the rampy things. Now, what you might not know about Mark on Puntos is that they rust. They rust like nothing else on earth. You may recall the Panda Pen, the uh, big barn full of Mark One Pandas and Mark One Puntos and various other Fiats and things. There were quite a few Mark One Puntos lurking in there and they all look really, really nice on top. And every time I said to Vern, what's this one like? This one looks really good. He just sort of sighed and said, floor pan's gone. So this car, I wanna make sure it doesn't do that. It's an important car historically being the oldest Punto in Britain as far as we're aware, built before the cars went on sale. So it's a potentially a pre-production car, um, certainly a pre-mainstream build car, which we would like to keep saved for the future. And it's becoming very, very rare indeed. Someone said the other day that there were eight uh, 1993 Puntos left on the road. Let's try not to reduce that to seven and get underneath it and save it from itself. So I've got a bunch of fresh batteries, got a new whizzy wheel in here, got my PPE, including a new mask, and I've got a torch. Now, as we saw, oops, up at Go Italia when the car was on the ramp, the chassis is broadly in good condition, but all this old stuff is flaking off, so I'm gonna have to do my best to get underneath here grind this stuff off and then put new built hamber on. 
Uh, I'm going to ignore though the wheel wells, the arches, because as we've seen when it was on the ramp, we needed to do a bit of work in there and I don't want to be putting fresh flammable <laughs> under seal up inside there when I know I've got to come back and do welding in those areas. So we'll just concentrate on the floor pan and the rear suspension as much as we can. This stuff, for example, we'll get it as clean as we can, then warmth on some built amber. I do need to be doing the uh, 75 as well with the stuff, um, but because we've got a hose pipe ban, I can't get the jet wash underneath that car, so I'm going to have to take it to a friend's house to jet wash it, and then I can get the clear stuff on like we did on the, uh, on the Mini. Also, the um, Alpha, I think, is due for a, a touch up in terms of under seal as well, and that thing will be as well. God, there's so much under sealing to do. Gonna need to take this off at some point, but that means taking the entire bumper off, which grows the job quite significantly. This whole boot floor is in kind of need of. floor panel back to bare metal because that would take forever and be ridiculous but what we have got is a lot of areas where the paint is just peeling off and this is going to be causing problems because the water we've got underneath it so we'll in these areas take it back until I find solid um solid under seal solid paint and then we can call that a good point to stop otherwise it'll be ridiculous and it's already very slow and messy this job I appear to be quite grubby. I'm glad I wore the mask and gloves and goggles. Now someone, prior to my taking ownership of this car, has made an absolute pig's ear of this bit of um, pinch weld, this seam here. You meant to jack it just here. I guess it's kind of actually a bit thicker, I guess. Uh, but someone's done a jacking just there without using the correct jack or the adapter to use on a Troy jack and just mashed it. So I'm gonna see if I ow, see if I can um, strengthen it out a little bit just to make it look a bit less rubbish. There we go, that looks a bit less rubbish. I'll just uh, wire brush the falling off stuff off as well. These bolts that hold the plastic trim on are very rotten indeed, so we'll come back to that at a later date. Oh, this really is quite an exhausting job. So, so messy as well. I need a hand brush as well, hand wire brush, to get into some of the uh, nooks and cranny type areas too. A huh, little bit more sill straightening just here as well. Well, now I've just finished with the grinder and it's like a third day of weather right now. It's gone from pleasant to pouring the rain to overcast to sunny again. Um, I've got grots and bits of stuff in like every single orifice possible. My ears, my no, not nose actually, thanks to that um, mask thing, which I'm really rather grateful I didn't bother to go and wear today. It was even in my pockets and in my socks. But now I'm going to go in with a small wire brush and try and get into the crevices around the back of the suspension. I'm not though going to be tackling the, um, the wheel arches today, as I said earlier. Because of welding to do in the future, I don't want to be coating that with flammable wax. So at a later date, I might even farm this one out because it will probably mean taking the fuel tank out. And that's a big old job. <laughs> yeah, I will uh, get those wheel arches sorted out because this 
this needs welding, but this is right by the fuel filler and I can smell fuel vapour. So I'm probably going to have to have the fuel tank out and the fuel pipes removed before I can tackle this. Oh. So yeah, this is an area which is disgusting. If I can do the back of this wheel hub, that'll be a bit more pleasanter. It looks a bit like it's not spent time on the bottom of the sea. Likewise, these springs, which Jamie did point out, are going to be original to the car because they've got this yellow, red, and there's a third colour on there as well. Uh, paintwork in there. Now these look like original factory um, clips that are holding this stuff on. I'm not quite sure what to do with them. With I don't want to snip them off. But I can do it getting underneath them. I'm not too worried about having to get access from that side because when the wheel comes off, I'll get around that side of the suspension frame and all the rest of it from over there. So I've got two angles to attack this front. This is all currently solid, despite the fact it's got a lot of surface rust on it. But I would like it to stay solid and not become a horrible perforated mess. And by doing this now, hopefully I can prevent that. Not too worried about getting all the rust off because the paint will kill the rust. What I need to make sure though is that all of the uh, old rust proofing is off it so that your paint can stick to the metal. But it is interesting how the passenger side is nowhere near as bad as the driver's side when it comes to the corrosion. It's like it's parked one wheel in the sea or one side in the sea, one side not. So the tank hanger strap here. This side's actually uh, not bad at all. It's come up quite nicely with a bit of... Yeah, even the fittings and stuff are quite nice on the uh, brakes and lines. Ugh. Right, let's go get some squirty stuff. Right, living here in the back of the 75, I've got three products. I've got S50, which is a cavity wax, which we can put into the suspension struts, the uh, chassis rails, that kind of stuff. We've got UC, which is clear anti-film corrosion wax, which is what's going to find its way on the bottom of this car fairly shortly and we've got UB which is a firm film anti-corrosion which is a black wax which is what we're going to use for the bulk of this car because it can hide all horribleness with it. Now really it should go without saying if you're going to use this kind of stuff read the instructions do wear face type breathing protection do wear eye protection definitely wear gloves because this stuff is gross when it goes in your hands. And it says although Dynex UB may be applied to greasy, corroded or dirty surfaces, better results are obtained by application to a clean, painted surface. UB should be applied to dry surfaces free of loose, flaky rust or coatings. Back time. You build this stuff up in layers, so you put a layer now, give it a little while, and get back in in a minute. There's springs, it doesn't look quite so terrible. They won't get an advisory in the next MOT. So, cut these. Bumper hanging stanchions, whatever you call them. Like, like a, 
The tricky thing is to get different angles on the same bit of metal so you get all 360 degrees covered. That's our wheel. Pop the wheels off at some point and tackle the saw from the arches side as well. I think I mentioned the rubber gloves thing earlier but you 100% want the rubber gloves. I can feel these gloves sticking to the can. <laughs> while I'm painting and even more than that you want the breathing protection this mask was only about a tenner but you get a like, properly high level of filtration the one tip I would offer for this particular task is to keep moving don't lie in the same place and try and do everything from that same spot because as you move around you spy things you missed from a different angle. You move to the other side, you just even change direction, you're lying. You'll suddenly see a whole bunch of spots that you've missed. And that means you then get to cover the entire car. What do you want to be doing? This actually looks really nice under here now. Now before I finish up in the back, I've got S50, which is the cavity wax. And I'm gonna put some of this into the chassis legs with the suspension arms. Oh, I should have got Get paper under there. This one's full. And we'll what the driveway won't go rusty now. Right, so that does now look actually quite pleasant underneath this car. Lovely sort of satin matte waxy goo everywhere. I've even kind of put the cavity wax through any holes I've been able to locate. I thought I might find some in the door shuts, but I couldn't. But this does actually look really rather good. I need to get some braking clutch clean on the tripod because the camera's sticky. The rear suspension now looks actually quite pleasant rather than shocking an MOT failure. And around this side, it's looking good as well. I think basically this is a situation we've caught the car just in time to prevent anything bad happening. Another sort of six months or so and we'd have had perforations in the floor and this would have gone the way of pretty much every other Punto out there and have no floor left. But right now, looking good. When the paint's dried, or the, the wax has dried, I can uh, get everything off the, the ramp, then I can take the front wheels off and go and do the front suspension as well because that's a job for another day because honestly, I think I spent long enough underneath this car for one day, <laughs> but certainly it's drastically improved it. And the old built, built hammering will have done wonders for the car's future longevity and not being a rusty pile of poop, which is always a good thing. Right, so hopefully, ah, hopefully this has been interesting and entertaining and you've enjoyed seeing this car be saved for future generations. This, the oldest right-hand Punto in the UK, possibly the world. It's here and it's, getting better by the day. I do need to get some colour match paint so I can touch in this wing though. But this whole car needs a bit of a, a paint up in various places. We will be at the uh, Festival of the Unexceptional with it, hopefully on the 29th, assuming it continues to run well. But in the meantime, I have got, as I said at the beginning of the video, a boot full of other spares. So it's got a full service coming. It's got cam belt. It's got the uh, rocker cover gasket. So maybe if the weather holds out tomorrow, I'll do that then. Who knows? We shall see. Right then, let's go and pack up my mess and see you again tomorrow. Like, subscribe, you know the routine. Do, the, you do all the stuff, the clicky stuff. I'll see you later. Goodbye.